Hey, welcome to this episode of Happy Today podcast. Our topic of today is differences between SLAs and XLAs. So let's talk some a little bit on those that what really service level agreements are, how do they compare to experience level agreements. On our uh, practical guide to XLAs, we have this table comparing them. So I think in this episode, if we go through and maybe go a little bit deeper in, in, in all of them. I think the first one is, is this uh, one that we have been talk, talking earlier, that uh, SLAs measure the output and the processes of IT. So what does XLA then measure? Or XLA measure the outcome of, of the service. So there is a big difference, even the word is almost the same, yeah. but the outcome means that you're measuring what really is the value of the services and it is the value to the end users. Yeah. Kind of whatever we do in IT, if it doesn't have a value to the end users in helping them to be more happy or be more productive, there isn't any value in the service. I think that's pretty black and white from, from my perspective. Yeah. Okay, it might make them efficient again. They are more efficient than the original product. They are able to work with the customers better and so on. But in the end, it all comes to making their life easier. Yeah. It can be service management, it can be the applications they are using, whatever. It always comes to that really XLAs are measuring the value. And now the traditional SLAs typically are measuring the process, how things are done and what is the end result. We resolve this many tickets, servers were up and running and so on. So really kind of a kind of the maybe the challenge for us in IT is that these traditional SLAs are, are kind of facts. Yeah. There are things that happen, we can measure them and, and we can show them, okay, this was what happened. But it doesn't mean that the end users would be happy with the service. Sure. And, and that kind of is that then we start to measure the feelings of people. And that maybe is the challenging, kind of one of the challenging things when you're moving from SLAs to XLAs. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you're measuring things that doesn't matter, kind of, <laughs> there is no point to that. To do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Then the next one is was that SLA focus on high level objectives that can be easily met. However, do not uh, paint an in depth picture of what is really happening within IT. Yeah, I think that is. Is it the watermelon then? <laughs> we might have been talking about the watermelon quite a lot. Yeah, it is. It's, it's kind of SLAs are. You could also turn out that they are the kind of the small parts of the service, kind of high level of one of the things you do in IT. Yeah. available or something but on the other hand like in service management area these you are always thinking how your resources are used yeah and now if one of those SLAs you are measuring is, is dominating let's take an easy example the mm. answering speed to phone yeah if that is 30 seconds that takes resources away from the other things you do in IT sure. or in the services do you have to have people waiting for those calls and that is not then getting the end users more happy. Yeah, yeah. Then SLA show if IT is delivering, delivering projects within right time frame and budget, ignoring the true success of the project. Then how does XLA then change this? In XLA, you should be setting and you should be thinking about, again, the value. So this is one of, because my history is in, in mm. delivering whatever projects. Yeah. And, and very often as a project manager or program manager, you are measured by the budget and timetable. Yeah. And then you are when doing the project, you are thinking that now the budget is over going and we are dropping this and this feature away. In fact, we are destroying all the benefits of the project. Yeah. There is no valuable outcome anymore. But you did meet the budget and you did meet the timetable, so you were successful. Yeah. No way. You just lost all that money that you used for the project because in the end, you only delivered Mm. something that was not anymore available, but uh, valuable. And, and that's a thing that when you are starting a new project, you should be thinking that from the perspective of what is the outcome of this project. Yeah. And it's not timetable or losing yeah. money. It is the change that happened for the, for the end user's benefit. So what was the application now doing better for them? True. And they are again saving time and happier. And I think you can also take this thinking to, to DevOps and Agile, Agile world which are not in a way a project with an end, but they are like this continuous cycle where you deliver stuff. And uh, is it successful if you just deliver a, a new piece of code that, that doesn't bring any value to anybody? 
Yeah. Or does it have to be something that actually delivers? Again, every iteration brings more value. I think that starts to go to already to experience management. Yeah. And and in there, the key point is that the difference between excellence and that is that now in this project world, you are setting targets and recognizing those areas to develop. So sure. kind of the input for the HR way of working. Yeah. This is the problem we are solving and this is how we do it. And then you, after the post, can say, okay, it really had an influence on the end user experience. Yeah. That's why I think also one of the things that we say here in the guide is that, that in SLAs, the measurement target stays the same. And uh, in, in XLAs, it's constantly changing. And, and I also had this idea that maybe it's actually because in SLAs, you bring the targets from your ITIL and process and availability KPIs. You bring those numbers into it. When, in my opinion, at least, it should be that in XLAs you define the metrics mm. that you use, but the target should be constantly evolving. Yeah, and it's okay. Maybe there most likely are companies that are doing SLAs in a way that they are changing the targets. Yeah. So not really kind of this is the changing approach that you should be having. Not mm. that you first said, okay, this is the targets we have for these different KPIs. Yeah. And then you think about, okay, this is great, we have this same for three years, this is what is really making our entities happy. Then you are in the watermelon and I'm very yeah. deep in that world. Yeah. Uh, because you should be really finding those things to, to change where you can be better yeah. rather than being able to show with the numbers that, hey, this is how great we are. Okay, that is one benefit at some point you might be in that, but that's not the point. Mm. The point is to be developing and having interesting challenges for for your own teams to be better and being able to show that we are developing and, and we are learning. Yeah. So I think that is the biggest difference between the SLAs and XLAs is the attitude. Yeah. And I wouldn't even in XLAs, but yes, you should be updating the target, but not the overall target. Yeah. That That's not so important. I totally agree. Yeah. That's why even I think though, that those targets are not, not so specific that, okay, let's have like 96% of satisfaction or let's have this or that and then, then we kind of stay in that level but it's yeah. it's really on on uh, you know for different uh, different services different channels you should always have specific targets for different teams to actually try kind of that. even you have an example of what you could do wrong in in, in you set a really high experience, uh, experience target yeah and then what happens in service desk is that you are still having password resets there yeah 20 percent of the things you measure are coming from that one yeah. service. And that is all 10, 10, 10, yes. 10, 10. And that is making the experience score. Yeah. You should not be, you should automate those things yes. that are the easiest one. Yes, it would mean that your overall score is dropping. Okay, you can measure also the automated services, yeah. but some companies are thinking that we cannot do it because we wouldn't meet the target. Yeah. And that's like, why? Yeah. And now kind of the target is then dominating using your own yeah. Prince. And probably why they don't want to do it is just because uh, SLS are focusing on sanctions. Yeah. So, you know, if we drop our score, then we get a huge sanctions. Uh, what about the uh, XLS? I know that, uh, for example, the, the customer case that is on, on our website, uh, Alstom Munksha, yeah. they have set rewards on their XLS. So. Yeah, there are a couple of other stories there as well, like uh, Virgin Trains, former, their first in trade nowadays, I want the best coast, yeah. yeah. They, uh, they have done the same and all these companies who have started to have rewards, the cooperation with the vendors has changed dramatically and after that the scores have changed dramatically. So really would, would kind of recommend to everybody to think about that it is your benefit that your provider is better and they have motivation to do things better. Yes. And, and when there is very, very clear benefits of making your end users happier and more productive, there is no point to try to save all the pennies and, and pounds and, yeah. and euros from from the ticket price if you get better service. And that's that's kind of a of course it needs trust between the vendor and the customer. Yeah. But I think the whole XLA or experience management, they don't work if you don't get to the level of, of trust. Yeah. So if you try to handle things with sanctions, you already failed. Yeah, okay. Let's see, this is an assumption that uh, yeah. we are going to have a survey out in December. We haven't done that. Analyze our data from the perspective of what is causing that also services providers are having 
less satisfied end users than those who are having internal services. Yeah. And one of the assumptions we have there is that is it because of the sanctions? True. But let's see, it's it's something yeah. I really Yeah. All right, I think that's a really good wrap on the on the SLA versus XLA. And also in the guide we have at the end resources. So we, we work with uh, great partners who actually help companies defining these XLAs. So as we actually provide the experience management tool, uh, we have listed those partners that actually you can contact and uh, will help you in, in your journey. But I think that's it. So as we say in Happy Today podcast, stay happy. Thank you.